national income, unemployment and inflation. These are the three big pillars of modern economics. 2011 things changed a little bit. David Cameron decided to introduce happiness, subjective well-being as a fourth pillar of importance in the country. So that means that whenever the civil service, whenever policymakers think about a new, a new way of doing things, a new policy, now they have to think about the impact on national happiness. For many years, economists and policymakers have taken as given that people maximize, they optimize, they're rational, they care about money and they care about accumulating as much of it as possible. What we now know on the basis of decades of collaborative work between economists and psychologists is that that is not always the case. People are complicated, they make mistakes, they care about more than just money, they care about a whole plethora of different things. And to understand that, economists need to interact with psychologists, behavioural scientists, historians, political scientists, and as many different disciplines as possible. And this has given rise to a new field within economics called behavioural economics. And within the University of Warwick, within the economics department, we have a new and exciting group of economists that work on exactly these sorts of issues. Part of our group is a core of individuals who work on behavioural economic theory. That is taking traditional economic theory with its traditional assumptions, modifying them, expanding on them, bringing in aspects of mathematical psychology to add rigour and to use these more complicated models to try and predict behaviour. And one of the unique features of economics, which allows us to do what, say, psychologists haven't done for many, many years, is to mix this mathematical rigour with experiments, with the sort of experiments that come naturally from the natural sciences. So we're mixing experimental methods with mathematical models and with our economic way of thinking about the world, the importance of policy relevance and impact. And this gives us a, a unique insight into the relationship between the importance of happiness and how people behave. Behavioural economics is not at odds with traditional economics. All of us in the group also work on traditional economics, but there are always questions that are not answered. And the trick with behavioural economics is to try and address those sorts of questions. What happens if people don't do what you're expecting that they're going to do? Behavioural economics is all about answering that question.